Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 55 of Darwell20's Let's Play Enigmatica series, where I'm hunting for slimy bees, and I would say that I've successfully hunted for slimy bees. Uh, you can see on the map, I've flown from my base, which is somewhere up here-ish. Came all the way down here, because I was thinking this might have counted as a... Uh, as like a swamp biome, but it did not. It was a boreal clearing and it did not count as a swamp biome. So I just started flying aimlessly. Weeping Witch Clearing, I found that biome, also not a swamp biome. And then I came just in general this direction and wandered upon a very small looking marshland biome. And uh, there you go, I found, uh, I found some slimy bees, which I'm very excited about because uh, it means that I'm one step closer to have an emerald bees. Uh, last couple episodes we've been playing with resourceful bees. It is a fun mod. Definitely some cool stuff in there. Um, today's episode we wanted to do a bunch of things. Uh, we wanted to focus primarily on on automating and upgrading some stuffs. Um, so let's let's start off with doing the breeding for the emerald bee. Let's get that done. Then I'm going to set up an area like that, and we're going to see about having bees do their thing, their mutational thing with stone, right? Um, so before we do that, let's start with, where is this dude? I want my emerald bee. And that is going to need to be bred with a slimy and diamond bee. So we're just going to need a block of slime and a block of diamond. Cool. So do we have a block of slime? We do, I think. And a block of diamond. Cool. And that, in theory, should get me an emerald bee. And I think I'm going to do this inside my house, kind of like I did, you know, a little bit ago. Uh, now, I should have a diamond bee in here somewhere. Yep. We're going to release these two. I'm going to put them over here so I can get them to breed before they wander off too far. Hey. All right, bees. Hooray, Emerald Bee. Woot, we did the thing. How exciting is that? Now you, I would like to get you to come over here, Mr. Emerald Bee. So I th I'm assuming feeding him emerald blocks is the way to go. Uh, that's, you know, a theory that I'm going to go with. Does that interest you, Mr. B? Yeah, fly over here, little buddy. All right, you're gonna go here, you're gonna go here. Uh, go ahead and pollinate real quick, if you don't mind. Do the pollination thing. Excellent. And then once you've pollinated, go inside the hive so I can take accelerated a whole bunch. Deal? So he's got 11,045-ish seconds to go. And now he's at 9,000, 900 seconds. So 200 seconds passed in that time frame there. Not too shabby. Now I don't think bees come out of their hives at night. So I can only sleep during the day, huh? I guess it's becoming night. I suspect it. Once it's like definitely night, I will take accelerate the hive again and see if he won't pop out. Cause the thing here says for emerald bees, it takes 240 seconds, I think, in the hive for him to turn his his nectar into a honeycomb, right? So I think that actually adds up pretty closely with the time that he was in there, right? Because he was like at 1140 and then he was at like 900 ish. So that's pretty darn accurate. Um, hopefully they don't come out at night. Do they? Do bees stay in their hive at nighttime? I would think so. I want to make sure it's like fully nighttime, if you know what I mean. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool.
That's got to be pretty good, right? Yeah, they definitely stay in there at night. So once the tick acceleration here wears off, I'll go take a nap. It'll be daytime. He should, in theory, pop out. And he should, in theory, be an adult bee. Or close to it. Sneaky tricks. Look at that! Adult B! Good job, Emerald B. Now you're with me. Whoop! Sweet. Alright, so uh, we also wanted to look at apiaries maybe today and a few other things. So let's start with, I'm going to set up a beehive in a similar structure to what I had over here, um, whose job will be to generate resources for me. Cool? Cool. All right, let's see what we can come up with, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build and gadget my way into a nice little platform here. Let's kind of replicate this, right? So I'm going to vertical column U and U. That look cool. Is that how I did it? No, I didn't really do it that way. <clears throat> but I did do it with this glass now. So what we're going to have here then is something like this. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's a rough estimate, right? And then we're going to have a beehive here. And I think what I'd like to have is a tier 4 beehive, if I may. Um, <clears throat> so how big of a deal would that be to do? I meant, I meant to not do that. It literally occurred to me the moment I clicked it. I'm like, shouldn't I have done something like extra there? Yeah, everybody, calm down. Calm down. I very much did not mean to do that. Uh, but what I might do, once these guys calm down. All right, everybody with your red eyes of anger. Is collect all these bees. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like them kind of buzzing around here and being all buzzy bees-ish. But, um... I think I'd like them to, to, you know, chill out for a minute and maybe go into the refined storage system so that I can actually, like, properly start managing this environment. <clears throat> okay. Cool. All right, so we've got five bees in there. We've got one bee in there. I can get these guys out of here. I'm going to clear all these out, actually. There he is. Cool. And I probably want a few more empty bee jars. Is my glass thing not connected again? Killing me, Smalls. So I'd like a tier 4 hive, if I can, for this. Um, you know, I wonder if this... See, it says tier 1 hive in the name, but if you look on the tooltip, it says tier 2 and tier 3. So this is the tier 3 hive. We're going to want to upgrade this to a tier four hive i assume that's kind of funny i wonder if that's a bug it might be a bug so we're gonna need blocks of honey and blocks of honeycomb now honey blocks is it four or eight uh four it would seem that's cool uh and then we've got so i'm gonna need four of you for sure do we have any more honey? Uh, we've got honey bottles. Does that count? It might. It might. It might not. It does. It does. Okay. Sweet. It does work. Tier 4 beehive. Boom. Uh, that's the max tier beehive. It can hold 16 beads. It can hold 20 honeycombs. Hive time modification is 20%. So that means... Bees in there will run 20% faster. 
That sounds pretty cool. And that is the top tier, so we got an achievement for it. Awesome. All right, let's sleep through this night, and then we're going to set up uh, what might work out to be a pretty cool thing. Uh, my, my hope is that the bee's timing will work out. So here's my thoughts, right? I'm going to set up basically one, two, three, like a bunch of stone all the way down here to the end where we're going to have... Uh, a piece of dirt with a flower on it, right? So the bees will pollinate with the flower and then they will fly their stuff back. Um, and let's see, so we're gonna want this. We're going to want a dandelion. And I'm gonna put all the bees in here, all of them. And my hope is that the timing will work out such that like maybe one bee wanders over, he's going to pollinate, he's going to do his thing, he's going to fly back. And as he flies black, back, he's going to convert the stone into, say, diamond blocks. And very quickly with constructors, of which I'm going to want about nine, and destructors, of which we're going to want about ten, uh, we're going to break and replace and turn and put stone back. Okay? So then... You know, another bee might even be one second behind him. We'll also be converting the stone. Um, and that might be pretty cool. So we'll be able to put up to 16 different types of bees right there. Okay. Um, and then we'll, you know, kind of see how that works out and decide if it's working well. And if we need more than 16 beads, then we can just replicate this design for another 16. And I think that'll be cool. I don't know. We're, that's kind of what's in my head. We're gonna see how well it works out. So underneath here, do we have shrink in this pack? We do. Can't open wall shrunk. Does shrink not work? Oh, that's a bummer. Oh. Oh, it has a UI now. That's neat. Oh, you can make yourself bigger now? How big can you go? I'm afraid of how big you can go. Cool. That is cool. Does this have a hotkey to it? Category. Toggle shrink. Uh, just for toggling. Okay, fair enough. All right, so shrink definitely works. You just need to, by default, the shrink setting is 1.0, so it wasn't doing anything. Um, sweet. Okay, that's what I wanted, effectively. Okay, uh, so you're gonna be. Let's do let's do constructors here. Hopefully you can see this on YouTube. If not, just know that I'm placing constructors, and that's that. Okay, so those are your those are your ten. Though remember, when he gets too close, he might be he might be too close. So maybe I'll put one more. there oh man i love shrink so much oh man i love shrink so much is that a solar it is it's a solar eclipse i'm like it's i just slept through the night there's no way that that's a yeah it's a solar eclipse i might want to push this back one more and i think i probably will um because we remember they're only going to come out of the front there yeah that's the front so i want access to the sides and back because we're going to want to automate removing honey from the hive cool all right now that the eclipse is ending um let's let's resume uh so we've got so we've got all this stuff set up right the constructors are going to construct smooth stone i probably shouldn't put that glass there yet zoinks uh so that's going to be a stone constructor right so you're going to break stone effectively All right, so everything goes in there. Cool. And then on the back of all these things, I 
I can be a tiny person. I'm very good at this. Okay. We're gonna have destructors. Okay, and your job will be to blacklist stone. So basically, break anything that's not stone, including the stone bricks that we're looking at right now. So what'll happen is it'll place stone and then it'll break anything that isn't stone. So that way we don't have to whitelist all the different things it can break. Cool? Alrighty then. And then I'm gonna put my network receiver here. We're going to grab our network card and bind it. We're going to de-shrink. We're gonna slash home, pop into the basement, install the network receiver. I crafted these off camera in case you couldn't tell. Um, Is my Sojourner Sash still working? I assume it is. Yeah. It just feels slow for a second. I don't know why. Probably my imagination. So, hey, look what happened. Everything turned into stone. It happened while I was away, but as soon as I connected this thing, right, it said, ah, oh, you're stone. You're not stone. You're bricks. I'm going to break you. Ah, now I'm going to play stone. Pretty cool. Alrighty then. Now, I think the last step then would be to get something like our Emerald B, and we're going to tell Emerald B. Um, that your home is going to be, I wish I could access this flower a little bit because I want to be able to click them, but let's, let's place down our, um, with our building gadgets here. Let's get our glass placed. Okay. Um, and I guess, is there some kind of glass is there some kind of like glass fence not not really i guess i could just do like a normal fence right would this work if i were to put this here i'm curious i just want to try this right can I sneak? No, they have a bounding box that matches their entire block. Fences, please. Fences with your bounding blocks. I need something that the bee can't fit through, but I can click through. How about stone slabs? You think that'll be good? To prevent the bee from getting out? That might be good. That might be good. We'll find out, I guess. Uh, so let's put our emerald bee in there, and then I want to be able to bind him. Right? Hmm. He should actually automatically find his way into his hive. Yeah, Mr. B, no. No, 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 no. You were not supposed to come out there. I was not prepared properly for this. Bad direwolf. Let's try that again. So remember, when you pick him up with the thing, he's going to forget everything that he learned. And then you're going to be bound to the hive. So in theory, I'd like him to pollinate with the flower and then fly over the stone blocks, turning them all into emeralds, which will then get broken and replaced instantly with smooth stone. In theory, that's what should happen here. Also, in theory, I shouldn't have to bind him to the to the hive. <gasps> Look, it's working. Look, it's working. It did the thing. Did you guys see that? How cool was that? It worked. It super duper worked. Now, I could put another row of glass in the top. Absolutely. I'm sure some people are saying that I didn't do that. Uh, I agree. But he's allowed to not have that there i think it doesn't necessarily have to be there but if we wanted to be super cool about it then yes we could do that cool and then you should be processing now and then if i tick accelerate you okay and how long do emerald bees process 240 seconds 
So that should only take, you know, a few seconds to with tick accelerating to work. And then he's just gonna, you know, wander his way over. He's gonna pollinate. Because this is the only flower within his pathfinding algorithm. There should be no way for him to find another path, right? And then if we wanted to add diamond bees to the mix, we could do that. Now, here's the problem. We can't do quartz bees here because quartz bees needs netherrack. So we're going to probably need to mirror the setup for netherrack and any netherrack transmutations that we want to do. Wow, that was pretty stinking cool right there. That was pretty cool. Did you see all those emeralds? I saw all those emeralds. I saw all those emeralds, and I bet my emerald dude is back home, you know, getting to work. Though emeralds might not break in chunks. Yeah, emeralds probably break just straight up. So we have 1,900 emeralds right now. So I'm just going to tick accelerate this again. He should very quickly switch it up. And then look, he's like, all right, I got some more pollinating to do. Now, uh, there's two honeycombs in there. Uh, but tier five, tier four hives can handle 20 honeycombs. So he's not even 10% full yet. All right, so 1900 emeralds on the dot. Look at them go up. 1910 perfection cool and then we can pop a diamond bee in there and what he should do is he should immediately kind of basically do the same thing we don't have to bind him to the flower and the thing it, he should figure it out on his own he should be that smart right and i might even throw like an iron bee in there right um what do we got in here the yeti bee the water bees the sooty bees um hello diamonds Sweet, that worked out pretty well. Quartz B, Iron B, and they have different processing times, I think, right? Is that accurate? Iron B has 180 seconds that he lives in the, in the hive. So they should kind of just come out at their own pace and do their own thing, right? Even though the, the that's the Dire B, the Diamond B is 240 seconds, right? The Emerald B is 240 seconds, but they went in at different times, so they should come out at different times. And the speed at which it replaces things with stone is very quick. So, you know, we don't need to worry too much about that. That's pretty cool. And this thing is processing now because we've got our dude in the basement, you know, processing the iron. How cool is that? And if we were even concerned about how fast it was, I could throw speed upgrades in these guys. Right? I did make 40 speed upgrades. I would need 40 more, but, you know. I mean, we could. And it would just process that much faster. But I don't think we need it. I think it's fine. So what other kinds of bees do we have here, right? Sooty bees might work. Sooty turns stone into coal, right? Where's sooty bee? I can't even find it. There he is. Uh, his mutations is stone turns into coal. Yeah, easy peasy, right? Uh, other mutation, other things that we could do. Um, right, so he's just gonna do his thing. Uh, what other kinds of bees do we have in here? We've got the lapis bee. Sure, why not? Uh, we've got slimy bees. Do they turn stone into slime blocks? Because that would be cool. They turn honey blocks into slime blocks. Okay, okay, we're not gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, look at him go. Look at him go. <laughs> I love it. Um, I love it, I love it, I love it. That is fun, that is really neat. Invar, Invar B sounds nice. Glowstone B, that's probably gonna need netherrack though. I don't know, Forest B, I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have lots of wood, right? I would, I would, I would say not a bad idea. What do you guys think of this? Because I think it's super cool. Right? And we are at 5 out of 16 bees. Look, and look, now the emerald bee, he's, he's back to getting to work.
Ah, that's funny. He's pushing him. That is funny. Maybe I shouldn't have that top row of glass. What do you guys think? Should we should we eliminate that top row of glass so that they can uh, so they can pass each other in the night kind of deal? I might I might wind up doing that. Let's just be prepared to. Uh, they might be uh, there might be a traffic jam here. That might be a crisis actually. I think I've found a problem with my design. That's funny. Uh, now Mr. Sooty B is going to be a problem too. Let's just see what happens. I mean, now I'm experimenting. I'm like, how is this going to work? Give him a little room on top is not a bad idea, I think, though. That's funny. <laughs> Look, the pollen is dropping and it's just replacing as many blocks. That's great. That is actually pretty funny to see. It's like a tug of war going on. It's brilliant. Remember, there's a limit to how many blocks the pollen can transform. So I'm assuming we just transformed 10. I wasn't counting, but... Yeah, that might be a little bit of a problem. We're gonna have to figure that out. Come on, guys, figure it out. Get around each other. You've got two block spaces within which to work. That might be annoying. That might be annoying. You know, we could expand this, give them a little bit more room. We could expand it a little bit. I'll have to think about it. They're kind of figuring each other out for the most part. They're kind of getting there. This little bee is just chilling, though. I don't know what his deal is. I don't know. I don't know what Sooty Bee is doing. What are you doing, City B? Hey, you should not be out either. Get back here. Lapis B. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We'll figure it out. I'm not super worried. They might just be chilling a little bit. I mean, in fairness, I'm definitely trapping them somewhat. Um, and I think they want to wander a little bit. But their pathfinding should figure out that there's nowhere for them to go, really. We'll figure it out. I'm not too worried. Um, so what I could do is expand this uh, horizontally one block. So basically another layer of stone here. And then they could pass each other on their way to the hive, and that would be fine. Uh, and we could easily do that with um, another set of constructors and destructors. Right? Another 10 of these and another 10 of these. That might be a path, right? So then we would basically just remove all these guys and... See, he occasionally gets a little bit lost, but he should figure himself out. I'm going to keep an eye on it for a little bit. What I think I'll do is between episodes, just babysit this for a little while and see how it works out. And maybe it'll be fine and maybe it won't. This guy, he gets a little, like, this is doing the same thing the Sooty Bee was doing. He got a little, uh, a little stuckish. A little stuckish. Now, in addition to this, we're absolutely going to need to do some automation, right? We're going to need to automate this guy and have him be hit with a shear when his honey level is five, right? So once he fills up his honeycombs, we're going to need to collect those. And then we also need to look at apiaries because like, you know, if this is the tier one hive process, I'm curious how the apiaries work out. But I mean, 
Looks like it's doing okay. If, if there's a lot of bees inside the space at, a, at the same time, it seems to be a little bit of a traffic jam situation. But like I said, I think I can solve that by expanding this one layer. I'm going to babysit these for a little bit, though, and see how stuck they get. And if they keep getting stuck enough that it bothers me, then I'll expand this by one. Deal? Um, it shouldn't be too hard to expand by one. It should be really easy, actually. All right, for now, I think it's wrapping up point. So see, there's already two there. They're a little traffic jammy, but we'll see what happens. Uh, for now, wrapping up point, Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode because I I like it. I like, I like the bee pollinating, you know, doing the thing that it's doing. See, even two passing right next to each other, that worked out pretty well. That was no big deal. They went right behind each other and it worked. So, you know... Not bad. All right, wrapping up point for sure. Uh, Double 20 sign off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.